Here I am at Payne's Find. I didn't take any video getting to here because it's just highway, but uh, a lot of people just nibble around the edge of Western Australia, around the coast. There's a lot of really good stuff to see on the coast, so that's where they stay. Um, I thought I'd do something a bit different and I'd head to, to the exact geographic centre of Western Australia. And to make it even more interesting, I'm doing it on the motorbike. So from here, I'm going to go and have a look at the state battery and then I'm going to head directly uh, northeast from here and head out to the Gun Barrel Highway. So from here through Sandstone, through some stations and uh, to Waluna. So that's the plan from here. Um, should be a good trip. Uh, let's see if we get there. Um, not sure of what the weather's gonna do or road conditions and it's pretty clay out here so we'll see how we go. Sandstone. 221, that's the one. Off a little bit. It looks like a camp spot coming up. I just got it marked on the GPS. I don't know if there's anything there. This must be it here. It's supposed to be like a rest stop. Oh, yeah, there's the old tank. Must be in here. We'll see if we don't get bogged. All right, here's the old tank. Got my helmet on. Don't know if you can hear me. I just stopped at this old, um, this old uh, tank and well, and uh, here's the here's the well here under this tin. There's a bit of water in it. That's how they'd make tanks in the old days. Oh. Get back on the bike and keep on going. Okie dokie, let's go. Back on the road. You might not be able to see them, but out there there's some really interesting rock formations. Sandstone, what is it? 90 or something. far from sandstone so when we get there I think I'll go to the um, I think I'll start the caravan park here it's easy and I'll go there first and get a spot then might go out and have a look at the London Bridge and the brewery the two things to see here and then uh, come back into town okay which way do we go Must be left. I'll wait for this truck. Must be up here and to the right, I think. Oh, yeah, up the end of that street. Okay, well, we'll go up there and. So here's the uh, pub. There's an old car there, look at that. I'm coming up, look at that. Okay, let's uh, let's go in here and see if we can get a spot. All right, 
time to go out and have a look at the London Bridge and those tourist attractions. No exit. Got to go the right way. So the first thing is the old brewery. The old brewery was carved out of the rock back, I think in the 20s or 30s, to keep the beer at a, when are they brewing it, at a stable temperature. This might be yeah, I think this is the brewery. It is, it's got a sign right there. So let's go up there and have a look. So here at the brewery, which was carved out of that rock, uh, back in the 20s, I think, and that was to keep the brewing process at a stable temperature. Um, the guy, I think he got water from close, um, transported to here and brewed it in this uh, rock. So, a fair bit of digging uh, went on to, to get that out, I can tell you. So let's go and take a look. Sort of see the type of rock here that it was. It doesn't look too soft. And then in here is the actual uh, cave that's the place where it got brewed in behind here. Amazing. You can see all of the, uh, like the spoils are all here. This is where it's all been uh, taken to. It's quite a mound. Okay. I think it's only just down here a bit. So this is the number one attraction, tourist attraction of sandstone, the London Bridge. And it's just a natural bridge rock formation. And um, yeah, it's perfect golden hour sun at the moment. Uh, if you're on the other side, it'd be even a better photo. There is pictures of actually, I think an old T-model up on top of there, but I wouldn't go up there at the moment. It looks like it's thinner than it used to be. But um, I'll go to the other side and take a look. But I'm gonna hang around here for a little while, just until the sun gets a bit further down and then head back um, to the caravan park where I booked in earlier. So it's getting pretty thin up there now. These here boulders were probably up under there once. But it's not a very strong type of rock I don't think. It doesn't look very strong, like crumbly. And then the sun's uh, Got its nice golden light on that side. So uh, it'd be probably best in the morning to take a photo or videos of, uh, of this formation. So some other people have just turned up. This is a great place for a picnic. This is the sign that's here. Uh, that's maybe what I'm thinking of. It was a horse and carriage up there. And this is just about like a Calberry nature's window if you get close enough like that a nature's window so there's an, another barbecue made out of some old mining mining stuff similar to the one at the brewery London Bridge find the key okay Okay, away we go. So after uh, 
wondering where this road went. It ascended at this state battery here, and um, can you see that? Yep. And then around here, there's some uh, old buildings. So uh, we're going to take a look at see what's in those. So it looks like this was where the hopper would have been, and that would have been the battery in there. Doesn't look like you can get in, and no one's. Yeah, there it is. Oh, look at that! It's got the uh, the old Rushton Lincoln engine in there still. I don't know if you can see that. How cool is that? What's around here? Little barbecue area, and this looks like what where the uh, manager, owner, workers would have stayed. Old Kerry fridge. You can see the restoration work here. New posts, new tin. Okay, time to uh, head back to the tent, all well, the tents there. I've got to go stick it up at the caravan park. Okay, next stop, caravan park. Okie dokie, made it back to Sandstone Caravan Park. So we'll go and I'll uh, set up my tent. So it's the next morning and uh, just getting up, getting ready to head off to. Waluna and then north of Waluna. Just got the um, get the tent uh, and everything packed up to get on the bike. Um, got a bit of sleep last night. There's a truck stop over there. It kept me awake, but okay, let's uh, get on with it. I was just getting ready, so I thought I'd show you these uh, knee braces that I wear under my seat. They're really good. After I did a knee once riding, I got them, and uh, they definitely make a difference. So they're just pods. But they're uh, they're all armoured and they've got a uh, a limiter there. They work really well. And I'm wearing skins underneath because it's pretty cold. Oh, back to getting set up. I'm off to find the fuel, which is supposed to be a 24-hour place. They say. Ah, oh, over here. It is opposite the pub. <clears throat> Fueled up. Oh, I better uh, reset my trip meter. Otherwise, I won't know how far I've gone. Trip meter there. We have one here. Odometer. Um, so that is for the trip, we did 200, that is for, we'll make that one for the day, and this one's for the tank of fuel. There we go, so we got the trip meter sorted. So we uh, just got off the bitumen, uh, wasn't that far out of town, and we're back to gravel again, so I imagine it's... Mostly gravel. I think I hit the bitumen again about a k out of Wamuna, just the main highway, and then back to gravel again. So this must be it here, Lake Mawson Homestead. Look at that, they've graded all the road and everything. This is hardly adventure riding. Oh, homestead and camping. Alrighty, so we'll head up this well graded road. They must have known I was coming and graded it for me. It doesn't get much better than this. It's hardly adventure riding, is it?
let's go and take a look. So there's some contractors here doing the roof and stuff uh, on this old building. So they're just about to leave. So we'll go and take a look around and there's some buildings back behind the camera. But uh, yeah, this used to be a uh, working station. It's now um, basically a calm operated uh, camping ground. So we'll have a look here, have a look around at the old house, in the house if we can. And then there's a lake, I think, out the back. So we'll go take a look at that. There goes the calm, guys. They're still here cutting away, grinding away. Fixing it all up. Put a new beam through here. It's really good they keep these old places uh, up and running. Oh, well, take a look inside. You can see all the pressed tin walls. That's uh, that pattern's all tin. You see that quite a bit in these old places. An old 70s mirror setup. We've got a tent set up in this room. You can see the tin on the walls here. And wood panelling up the top. And the guys are just there. Oh, another swag. And the guys are just there fixing it up. This looks like the kitchen. So the guys are using that as well. Got a little set up here. This looks like, I don't know what this is. A cage, chicken cage or something maybe. Looks like it had thatching on the sides. Maybe it was some sort of cool room. Not sure. So one of the guys vehicles. This looks like the laundry. Would have had an old copper in there, that's obviously going gone. They, people either take them or they disappear for the copper that they're made of. Basins. One thing's interesting, these station houses always have a really big yard. Oh, there's, uh, this would be the fire for the, for the hot water. Poke the wood in there. So over here behind me is a whole bunch of other old buildings and there's a shearing sheds over there. So we'll go and take a quick look around and uh, see what this is all about. This would have been an old house right here. This is the usually what's only left of these old houses, a fireplace. So right here would have been an entire house, maybe the original homestead. And people now use it just for camping. And there's actually water, water there. And old metas. Metas, new improved. We have a building here and a building here. And they're all locked, I think. Are they locked? Dangerous structure risk area sign on there. What have they done? Maybe it's just a warning. But maybe you can get in. Looks like you can get in. Okay, so just a small room. Small room, probably just quarters. There's a bird's nest up there. Probably just quarters for the workers, for shearers. Another building. What's this one? Oh, this has got. Oh, check this out. It's got uh, all sorts of knickknacks for the bottle collectors I don't know if any of these are worth anything all sorts of knickknacks that people have found and dumped here some modern tables and chairs and an old 44 gallon drum um, heater or fire Just 
some old beds and things another old matters and a kitchen a modern fridge looks like I'll have a look what's in those files and then some uh, more bottles what's this about natural species oh this must be like oh yeah, cost of cows someone's put some uh, different types of plants in here that you can get around that's pretty cool oh yeah and there's a bit of a welcome welcome thing pretty cool so this is a little hut that you can stay in um, there's beds and everything in there. I'm going to head over now to the shearing shed and uh, take a look at um, what's in there. So the sheep would have come up through this gate here, got penned up in here, which is a bit uh, dilapidated under the feet. And then the shearers would have dragged them out through these doors. And this is the shearing stand would have been along here and would have been uh, on these poles would have been the head units and they would have pushed them out these openings here that are now covered over and then the wool would have been all sorted into its groups over here and that's what all these things are for are for the different types of wool and these are all for the different types of wool this would have been where the engine was that drove there would have been a uh, big flat big flat belt from down here through that gap up onto that pole and that would have drove the steering uh, the shearing units shearing head units and they usually had a grinder as well a comb grinder or a cutter grinder for sharpening up all the combs and cutters so this shed hasn't been used for a fair while oh there's a piece of the belt that would have uh, driven driven the head units. close to it now can't be too far down here it's got a bit sandy this must be no, it's not much of a lake is it if it's just a this must be it here so this is the salt lake that um, I was trying to get to it's not I thought it might be a real lake with water in it but it's not you can drive actually right across it so not I was going to put the drone up and hopefully get some nice still water shots but uh, not to be so. that's the lake which wasn't that uh, impressive oh well, we'll head back past the sta uh, station house and then we'll be heading uh, on our way to Waluna so now this has turned more into a track um, it's uh, just a single lane now, so not the big wide roads that we were on uh, previously. This is more what I expected the roads to be like out here. I imagine it's like this all the way to the Luna. Now it's turned into a totally different type of um, type of terrain. It's all uh, sandier now. So that happened instantly, basically. Yeah, it must be going through a patch of, yeah, I don't know, what are you, sand plain type ground? You can see all the flooding that would happen here in the last rain, you can see it on the edges, it obviously uh, runs down into that lake system, this becomes like a river. 
back into this sandy stuff again now. It's a little sandier than before. But still, still very reasonably quick. It's good to bad. Well, that um, that was a little bit of a worry. I went to change. I stopped to change the card on the camera and the battery because they were getting down, going in the red, and um, a card, the bloody wind blew, and I had my card just on the tank bag, and it blew it, and I couldn't bloody find it. So then I had to dismantle everything, and I found it in the end. But. Um, bit of a relief because that's got all the helmet, helmet footage up until this point so glad they ended up finding it oh we're back on the road so should be a turn off oh, to a station up here there's a camel there's a bunch of them oh he's got a crook foot Looks like he's got a buggered foot, that poor bugger. That looks like some guys are stuck. You bobbed! Oh, well, we'll give these uh, folk a hand. How do you find the emu eggs? We find the emu track yep. and we track him right to his nest. Okay. Yeah. And then do you have to... Sometimes we frighten him off. Yeah, you go. Sometime... Does he get angry or...? No. No, no he run away. He growl at us. Take yep. Yeah. Only when and they got the chick. That's the time. That's the time you've got to watch him. him. Yeah, they'll fight. They'll fight them. Yeah. yeah. The little one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not something you come across very often. Uh, we've got them... Uh, sorted out they're from a luna they were hunting emu eggs and after talking to them um one of them said they were teaching the young girl how to hunt emu eggs which is pretty pretty cool they hunt they find them they then um, eat them and then the shells they carve that's what they were doing so uh yeah it was actually interesting to talk to them what they're up to um, and we're back on our way to Waluna, and I don't know uh, where those guys are going. They, they've been stuck there two hours, and they reckon they would probably spend the night. They said this road, there's not very many people come down here. Even though it looks fairly well used, but so they're going to have to spend the night. Oh well, on we go. Who's one of them cars like on the Great Central Road? Get a photo. This one's got the engine out of it. Oh, then I go and get a photo of that and then head off. Yeah, have a look at that. It's similar to the one on the Great Central Road. So we'll uh, keep on going. Luna, not far away now. It's got a lot wider. This must be the highway here. Another like burnt out car. Been tarmac for a while. 13 to Waluna.
Alrighty, full of fuel and some in the jerrys and we're going to go and get a photo at this sign here proof that I was here okay just stopped for a uh, muesli bar and a drink of water this is the Gun Barrel Highway heading east out of Waluna and uh, it's obviously bitumen here but it turns to gravel it's gravel all the way to Carnegie where it turns into the Gun Barrel as everybody knows it, the track I'm going to turn off to the north up here probably, I don't know, 20 k's out or so and uh, head north to Glenisle Station um, and from there try and find this uh, centre of Western Australia uh, position. There is the start of the gravel. It's still a good road. Doesn't say oh yeah, Glen Hill Station 228. Glen Ale. Perfect. That's where I'm going. Stretch the legs. Alrighty, just had to adjust a couple of wires on my uh, ear pieces. We're on our way. 228. What are we at now? 40, 45. So I just saw this in here, so I thought I'd go and take a look. It's just got a whole bunch of old rubbish. old engines over there, look I'm just 20 engines over there old bloody Suzuki's or something there there's an old cruiser burnt Suzuki's, I love their Suzuki's unreal another little Suzuki whole bunch of Suzuki's, they love their Suzuki's, for sure. What's down this side? Just in the middle of nowhere on the side of the road. Truck brake parts. What's that? Another Suzuki. Someone here. Hang on. Hello. Hey. Where are you off to? Uh, Glen Ale Station. Which one? Glen Ale. Oh, right at the top. Yeah, old Lou up there. Yeah. Gonna catch up with him. I just saw this on the side of the road. I'm like. Shit, that looks interesting, so I just did a circuit through it. Yeah. yeah, those were guys from the station caretakers, I think, and the owner was uh, still there. And they just wanted to know what I was doing riding around their old junkyard, which is fair enough. But uh, it seemed like good, good people and said, yeah, no problems, and uh, told them where I was going. And uh, not too much of a problem, so I think it's pretty good. Oh, well, got... Uh, I still have about 190 to go or so, I guess, so we'll keep on going. Amazing how the scenery changes, but now it's just all open. You can see the sand dune line there. Bypass for the road. Right out there. Wow, 
maybe it's here, there's some rocks here, maybe this is it. This is more, more uh, touristy than the other place. Oh, yeah, there's a little shed here, so maybe this is it. Oh, the toilets, the campgrounds and everything. tanks there. Okay, this is it. I'm going to park my bike here and get a photo. Yeah, that's uh, just stopped to get some photos. That's Sydney Head. Just a rock formation with a creek goes through it. It's a big rock formation there. about 20 k's or 15 k's away from the station now so we should beat the sun but it's really uh, opened up here the roads um, still good obviously not graded very much but still still a good road so this will be the start of the station where the homestead is I guess that's the road to the um, CSR so that is um, how to get to the um, Canning stock route from here on that road and then they charge you for it just a small fee for road maintenance okay well let's go up here and see what's up here hopefully a homestead alrighty I think this must be it in here a windmill slow this must be it here for sure wonder where the homestead is over there by the look of it oh maybe Must be it here. Let's turn around. So I got here to Glenale Station. So just at the front, um, really cool house. Just talking to the guy that uh, owns it, um, the son of Lou, and um, yeah, really cool setup they got in there. Um, really interesting. I'll take you in there for a look, but check out this. Uh, these old. Units an old uh, Land Rover, so really cool. So let's go and take a look. So there's no power or anything out here. She's all um, she's all a generator or solar, and um, there's, they actually offered us a room here, which is handy. So it's setting up the tent, everything they uh, grow and make themselves. We're a long way from anywhere, and uh, chickens, ducks. He's got a KLX. And I see another bike in there. But you want to check out this place. So I got solar panels here. Got a boombox going. And then it's just a whole bunch of little sheds and things all joined together. And this is all open and just dirt. Kitchen table out in the dirt. Big fire in the middle. And uh, they're camping there. This is the kitchen. How cool is this? This is the lounge room. This bit's uh, got a floor. Bit of a bathroom. And what's this? A Honda. Honda? Yeah, Honda XR, the XR 650. And then there's the uh, other side. Oh, a little peewee bike. But how cool is that? 
So what to eat when you're on a cattle station? Well, I didn't get any video, but I'll show you a picture of the steak that we just was in the yards a little while ago and it's in the cool room and now it will be on this barbecue shortly. So, can't get better steak than that straight from a cattle station. Good morning adventurers. Just got up um, out here at Glen Isle Station. <clears throat> Today's the day. I'm going to try and get out to the uh, very centre of Western Australia. The guys here on the station um, are going to uh, guide me out because there's a few station tracks I think you've got to take. So head out there this morning um, after a coffee and some uh, breakfast. It's a little bit rain, rainy feeling today. I think there's a front going through down south, but so far so good. It's actually been reasonably warm out here, so that's good. So uh, yeah, that's the plan for today. See if we can get to uh, the very centre of Western Australia. And anybody who does a CSR, this is one of the ways to get there. You get to Well 9, um, and the road's actually over there somewhere. You get to Well 9. Uh, this is one way to get out there, um, or to get out if, if you're in trouble. So oh, hang on, what's this? A little garage setup or something? There's a V8 Ute here. Must be his uh, good car. Bit of an unusual car to have all this way out here. Check that beastie out. Hasn't done much for a while. There's, a, there's always tons of stuff, old stuff lying around these stations. There's an old Singer sewing machine under this tank stand. I have to show you this guys, you just wouldn't see this in Perth uh, anywhere. You probably wouldn't see it too many places at all, but time to feed the dogs in the morning, so... Is that good? Is that tasty? That's uh, dog's fed. Just uh, getting fuel into the bike. Um, had to bring extra fuel to get up here and back. Uh, just putting that in the bike, uh, getting ready to, to head off. And um, yeah, putting the power, put them, putting in another 10 litres. Um, that should uh, to the uh, station for fuel. Probably could get some here, but oh, I should probably get back to Carney. So uh, just put the last, uh, last um, five litre in. Okay, about to head off and head to the centre of Western Australia, see if we can find it. Um, let's uh, get on the bike and get going. Okie dokie, hopefully this sounds working. Just starting up the GPS and we'll be on our way. To the centre of Western Australia. So we did 502 yesterday, so I'll reset both of those, back to main map, okay I think we're on our way. Okie dokie. So this guy in this cruiser here is the station owner, he's going to lead us out there to where it is or get us close. I think he's coming the whole way actually and um, yeah make it a bit easier to try and find it which is good of him these guys are being legends out here really good remote country hospitality so this is just a little bit of the road to Carnegie it's uh, again a, a reasonable gravel road this is a road that I'll take when I head to Carnegie, so it's good to see it. Um, but it's a, a pretty reasonable road for out here. Um, you know, you could do 110, I'm doing about 80, but if you do 110, I'm just following the guy in front. 
and we just got to head down here and then now uh, we turn off to the left I'm pretty sure all right we've just turned off the road and we're on the track now which is one of the uh, mill run tracks or bore run tracks and it'll be interesting to see how sandy and everything this gets looks like he's having some trouble there Uh, hopefully not too much so just a bit of a dodgy spring on the old cruiser but um, we're away again about halfway out from the road edge there's a I didn't uh, turn a camera on so I had to ride but there's quite a bit of sand back there but um, got a fair bit better on sand riding so I just just go through at speed and she's all fine but um, yeah a bit sandy would have been a lot more difficult with the panniers on so we can't be too far away that's one of the yards one of the traps Trap the cattle for mustering them. So there's another mill there, and looks like now we're taken to the bush, so we can't be far away. Looks like there's been a scarifier or something in here. Maybe that's how they clean up a, a make a track. I didn't think it was going to be this sort of track, but makes it all the more fun. I'm just blown away how these guys actually. I guess if all these guys have lived here their whole lives. I'm just blown away how they can uh, find their way around. Since leaving the um, bore track or the mill road, um, we've done it, we're about halfway there, so we must have done 10 or so k's through the bush like this. I'm just following Lou, station owner. Pretty impressive navigation on his behalf. There's not really even a track here most of the time. Um, just like a creek line and when I look at the GPS we're basically following the creek all the way um, that must be what he's using for navigation or he just knows knows it like the back of his hand there's a bit of a track here now but yeah when we're back at the well and we turned off I was expecting I thought I must have had my GPS location wrong because I only did it to a couple of decimal places and I thought it would be you know a few hundred meters a kilometer maybe but my gps location was right and we were just going to do 20k through the bush so it's been a uh it's been a good ride actually but um we're coming up on it soon it's not far away now if my location is correct and it looks like this is now like there's been a vehicle down here in the past and the cows have followed the tracks and before we we're in the in the creek line so the creek must just wash the tracks away okay we're climbing up this hill it's interesting that nature put a hill right in the center of western australia Check that out. That's it, I think. We're here. How about that? Okay. Get off the park and have a look. Hello, good adventurers. Here I am at the centre of Western Australia. This little rock here is considered the centre. It's exactly where my mark was. And there's apparently a bit of a stone thing up top. We'll go and take a look. But 
after wanting to come here for a few years, um, I'm here. So let's go and take a look. It's like a little ironstone outcrop and it's just flat as far as you can see and then there's an ironstone outcrop right where it is. It's like nature intended it to be here. So here we are at the, if you can see that rock carn there, I think you can see it, that's, uh, that's the centre of Western Australia. And um, here at last, right at the spot. So uh, pretty of an epic view out here. It's up on a little hill, so uh, you can pretty well see as far as you could see to the horizon um, with a, a perfectly flat uh, landscape. So here at last.